During the late 1970s, the United States and the Soviet Union were in the middle of a Cold War. The race for arms was quickening every day. The threat of a nuclear war was prevalent. One twitch by either side, and boom. Then, as the new decade approached, one man sought to end this war of threats and hostilities. Not by force, rather by economic policies. Little did his opposition know they would be the makers of their own imminent doom, aided by economic policies put into place by Ronald Reagan, the fall of the Soviet Union was sped up drastically. Ronald Wilson Reagan was born on February 6, 1911, in Tampico, Illinois, to John Edward Reagan and Nellie Wilson Reagan. During his early childhood, his family moved from town to town, until they found a permanent home in Dixon, Illinois. There, Jack Reagan opened a shoe store. Ronald graduated from Dixon High School in 1928. While at Dixon High, Reagan was an athlete, student body president, and even performed in school drama productions. Reagan was enrolled at Eureka College on an athletic scholarship. He played football, was captain of the swim team, and ran track. Along with this busy schedule, he also was student council president and acted in school dramas, all while majoring in economics and sociology. Fresh out of college, Reagan signed a seven-year contract with Warner Brothers. He appeared in more than 50 movies in the following 30 years. As Reagan's career began to hit its peak in 1954, he landed a job as the host of a television drama series called The General Electric Theater. This is where his political views began to shift from liberal to conservative. He, he started to lead pro-business discussions and spoke out against excessive government regulations and wasteful spending. Reagan gained the public's attention in 1964 when he gave a speech endorsing Barry Goldwater, the Republican presidential candidate. Two years later, Reagan ran for the position of governor of California. He beat his opponent, Edmund Brown, by almost one million votes. He would serve two terms in this position. Reagan had tried to make the bid for the Republican presidential nomination in 1968 and 1976, but his attempts were unsuccessful. Then in 1980, he finally got the nod. In the general election that year, he defeated Jimmy Carter, the Democrat candidate. Reagan won the Electoral College 489 votes to 49 votes. Reagan's opposition was a man named Mikhail Gorbachev, the chairman of the Soviet Union. Gorbachev was the son of Russian peasants. He was born in the Stravopol territory in southwestern Russia. In 1964, he joined the Young Communist League, or the Kumsamola, and worked a farm owned by the state for the next four years. He proved to be a promising member of the League, and in 1952, he entered the law school of Moscow State University and became a member of the Communist Party. The most pressing foreign policy facing Reagan's first term was the Cold War. Dubbing the Soviet Union the Evil Empire, Reagan began a massive buildup of U.S. weapons and troops. The defense industry boomed. Reagan was sure that the United States was open to a window of vulnerability, to the Soviet Union in regards to nuclear defense. Reagan viewed the Soviet Union as both a dangerous military power and a collapsing economic system. Reagan knew this without having much deep knowledge of her at all. Because of high oil prices in the 1970s, Soviet leaders avoided any serious economic reforms. She relied on the oil revenues to keep the crippled economy going. Gorbachev believed that the Soviet economy depended on better relationships with other countries, especially with the United States. However, Reagan was highly against peace with the Soviets. He wanted to do more than just contain the communism spewing from her borders. He encouraged long-term political and military changes within the Soviet Empire that will facilitate a more secure and peaceful world order. Gorbachev decided to abandon the arms race and subsequently launch a massive military buildup. He withdrew Soviet troops from Afghanistan and reduced the Soviet military in the Warsaw Pact nations of Eastern Europe. This policy of non-intervention caused countries to break away from the Soviet Union, or as Gorbachev said, crumbled like a dry saltine cracker in just a few months. 
The first of many revolutions took place in Poland in 1989, where the non-communist trade unionists of the Solidarity Movement met with the communist government to discuss freer elections. In the end, the unionists won, earning the right to free elections. This sparked peaceful revolutions across Eastern Europe. These peaceful protests soon took a turn towards violence in December. A firing squad executed Romania's communist dictator, Nicolae Ceausescu, and his wife. Soon the Soviet Union's bad economy and Gorbachev's hands-off approach to Soviet satellite territories inspired a series of independence movements. In early December of 1989, the Republic of Belarus, the Russian Federation, and Ukraine all broke away from the USSR and created what was called the Commonwealth of Independent States. A few weeks later, eight of the nine remaining republics had joined the Commonwealth. Georgia would follow them in this process two years later. During his second term, Reagan forged a diplomatic relationship with the reform-minded Gorbachev. In 1987, the Americans and Soviets signed a historic agreement to eliminate intermediate-range nuclear missiles. That same year, Reagan spoke at Germany's Berlin Wall, a symbol of communism, and famously challenged Gorbachev to tear it down. Today I say, as long as this gate is closed, as long as this scar of a wall is permitted to stand, it is not the German question alone that remains open, but the question of freedom for all mankind. In the 1950s, Khrushchev predicted, we will bury you. But in the West today, we see a free world that has achieved a level of prosperity and well-being unprecedented in all human history. In the communist world, we see failure. There is one sign the Soviets can make that would be unmistakable, that would advance dramatically the cause of freedom and peace. General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. <laughs> Mr. Gorbachev, Mr. Gorbachev, Tear down this wall. 29 months later, Gorbachev allowed the people of Berlin to dismantle the wall, ending Soviet domination in East Germany. After leaving the White House, Reagan returned to Germany in September of 1990, just weeks before Germany was officially reunified, and with a hammer, took several symbolic swings at a remaining chunk of the Berlin Wall.